Welcome. Let's talk about using social media within your classroom or online courses. Um, as you know, I have social media, I use social media, but I have never used it in my classroom environment before. But I'm, I think I'm going to try it the upcoming semester. The reason for that is because I have been taking some courses that have been showing me ways that I could use uh, the social media within my courses. The thing I caution is be very careful of what you put up on the on there. Make sure they're private if they're private or public if they're public. Don't put stuff and don't get them confused with one another. Uh, I'll be showing you here in just a little bit some of the programs that I've learned how to use and will be using and how to use them hopefully safely. Safely, sorry. <laughs> um, but beyond that though, as you know, everybody, every student, most students have a computer notebook with a camera, microphone, those types of things. So if you wanted to, you could use programs like Adobe Connect, which is typically not free, but our, our university uses it, or a program called Zoom, which is free for the first 40 minutes and up to 25 users. My word of caution to you on this would be make sure that everybody has their cameras turned off. Because it is nice seeing everybody in the classroom, but if you have too many cameras on, that will kill the bandwidth and uh, your connection will be very poor and very slow. So, uh, and the one reason why I like using it is for online courses because then if a student has issues, they can show you on their computer what their issue is. And typically, you can take over their computer or help them solve whatever issue they are looking at on their, on their computer, like whether it be a simulation. Uh, paper or whatever that could be. So, okay, uh, with that being said, let me jump right into how I use social media and hopefully safely use social media with my students. So, the first thing we're going to look at here is everybody knows Facebook. Uh, pretty much everybody I know has Facebook accounts, and uh, quite often you can make groups like here I have my, I have my network security group in here. You can make them public or private. And within here, you can actually post things that are happening at your school or for your class, and your students can come in and reply to these or post their own. I typically would not use this as a, a homework assignment as much as a place where they can interact and change information back and forth. On that. So that's Facebook. The next one we have here is Twitter. Twitter, of course, you know, is used a lot nowadays, and there are now up to 240 characters, which I have never gotten that far before. But if you look at Twitter, Twitter is just basically a um, hello board is what I call it. It's where you go in and you can see how many people are following you, how many likes, profiles. You can, you can actually go and you can actually follow a company, events. Uh, you can follow uh, Gizmodo, PC, you can follow uh, your local newspaper, uh, your local TV stations, whatever you might want to do on that. The next one is actually more for, I guess, professionals or people looking for jobs, and this is called LinkedIn. And LinkedIn is um, a thing where you can post your resumes, your current activities, your education, your volunteer experience. Uh, what you've done, the people can endorse you on skills that they know you have, your certifications, honors, projects, and they also have a new feature now where they can actually, you can actually turn on what's called uh, recruiters and they can recruit you for jobs that are possibly in your area of interest, uh, a given uh, whatever LinkedIn that you are currently in. Hold on. Okay, now the next one is more of just a Picture related, this is Pinterest. Everybody knows what Pinterest is. Typically, it's a board where you can post pictures of stuff that might interest you. You join groups and you can also create your own Pinterest boards. I have three of them here one on computer tech, one on food, and one on my network security course. And this is basically just an FYI type thing where you can uh, help your students find and uh, discover new things that are happening out there. So that's Pinterest, and that's how I use it. At that given point, you can also follow or be followed either way. I know it sounds kind of creepy, but it's not like that. It's so they can see when you post something new what's happening. The next one is called, it's called Instagram. Instagram, 
I probably would not use this as a classroom environment, but it does allow you to see instantaneous pictures of friends. You can follow them. And uh, uh, this is more of a visual type thing where you visually see what's happening. You can typically upload them from your camera or smart device. I mean, those kind of nature like that. Okay, the next one is called Slack. Slack is one that I did not hear about until this course. You can make what are called Slack boards and you can you can invite people, manage people, uh, post things, you can record messages, do pictures, you can even do phone calls and those kind of things like that with Slack. Slack I guess I would also use more of like a messaging board than anything else that way you get an idea of what's happening and what uh, the best thing is. The next one is called Dingo. This is one it, this is just like another kind of messaging sharing type thing where you can comment on people's inputs and what they're doing and it's almost like the old BBS boards way back in the day when you used to type and reply to somebody and they would reply back but in this case you can add videos and whatnot to this one. The next one we'll be going to is called Trilo or Trilo. This is where you actually make boards or lists you can give them deadline dates, you can give who's who's assigned to them, and you can also have a whole bunch of different kinds of boards that you want, and you can organize them, you can add calendars to them, you can add emails to them, you can even put a progress bar of how far you've gone with each one of these, and it can even remind people that their part of whatever is happening is due next. Change the name of it, uh, like here for instance you can see when it was done, if there was an attachment, it is an attachment. It's past due because it was due on the 19th, or that's when I had it set for. You can subscribe to it, copy to another board. Just makes it a kind of like another convenient place to put items like that. And my probably my most favorite one is uh, YouTube. Uh, I have my own channel, of course. And on my channel, I try to put as many videos that are related to my courses, teaching them about the key things they really need to know about and the reason why I created this channel was because every semester I would go over the same lecture at least three or four times in the given semester and and as you know that burns up time. Time is something you do not have enough with on it. Uh, with YouTube you can subscribe to it. They are now getting more uh, a, a more strict on their policies and stuff like that to so just be very aware of what's happening and also to uh, you can also download these and, and you can use them in your classroom as well. So these are the social medias, uh, YouTube, Trilo, uh, this is Slack, uh, oh, I forgot what this one is, oh this is Slack, this one is uh, D D I I G O. I I can't even pronounce that, Instagram, Pinterest, LinkedIn, Twitter, and of course Facebook. Now like I said before you don't have to use all these. In fact a lot of these are actually kind of duplicates of one another. They kind of show you uh, things that are happening, what's happening like bulletin boards, those kind of things. So I'm probably not going to use all these but I do plan on using the Facebook, the Twitter, and I, my YouTube of course, and probably the, the uh, Trilo for project management of class projects. Now, uh, would you replace your uh, Canvas or Blackboard? No, I would just say use these as more supplementary and especially if you have online courses where it's very hard to get a hold of students, the more content they can get a hold of and see, I think the better off and smoother your class will go overall. Also, that just gives you more avenues of communication because all of these programs are free you can't subscribe to them, but you can use them perfectly free, and you, they are totally accessible on iOS, iPad, iPhones, Android, uh, Microsoft, you name it, it they, sh they have a program for it. So there, so there really is no, I guess, reason for or the lack of communication within a given area. So with that being said, uh, I hope you enjoyed this presentation, and I hope you use these programs safely. and. Um, please have a safe time online and have a good semester. Thank you.